Bronco of a Derby. It's Max Broken foul back to Bonanza down the rail. Mr. Expedient. Oh, it's a speed stretch approaching the wire, and it's going to be Smuggler's Hole to take the 2,000. Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. And welcome everybody to ASD Live brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. Day 11 on the racing calendar. Let's take a look back at last week's racing action. The last day of racing was Wednesday. The hot jockey, well, it was Praven Badry who got two wins. That vaults him up to second. Still 10 behind jockey Antonio Whitehall, who seems to be plucking a win a day. And behind them, jockey Jorge Carreño, Ronald Alley, and Demario Bino. They're all tied at seven. On the trainer's side, it's the ladies that are leading the trainers with Wendy Anderson and Lise Pruitt at seven. Tom Gardipe Jr., Jerry Gorno, who's been on fire as of late, and Shelly Brown. Stretch uh, last week was a lot different than the week before. Yeah, it was. It, again, it was, it was a fair track surface, basically. I actually had very little variance. The Monday and Wednesday it was a few lengths fast compared to part times, and Tuesday was a couple lengths slow. So we haven't really seen that kind of change from from especially in the middle. Uh, I didn't see any strong running bias in there. I thought uh, all three, you could come for, you could go to the lead, you could come off the pace, inside, outside. So uh, that that was the thing there. I thought one thing to kind of make note is if you were watching replays or made some notes on horses that maybe had a, a tough trip in the last start and, and showed something that they improved and and uh, that kind of went throughout. So if, if you're making those notes, we're getting to see these horses improve. Some that didn't really run a first, a good first out did improve a little bit, a few of them. And then uh, I didn't find any surprises in there. There were a couple price horses, but 
we both twigged on those. And uh, the, la the pick four was the, one of the highest of the year, going 116,000. Three favorites basically won one price horse that it was your top pick. Star to be. Star to be, yeah, it was a star. And the pick four but, uh, paid 291. So I Which thought. Which Stretch had, and no, I didn't. Yeah. So, well, if you. Oh, you also had the pick five uh, with Attaboy Cookie. Going back to your trip notes, that horse finished so fast. I didn't give it enough uh, credentials in there. I liked uh, my horse, who ended up running second. A nice pick by you, Stretch. And getting the pick five, over $1,000, and your ticket was under 30 bucks. It was 1328 for those keeping okay. track for 2880 But anyway, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Uh, we're a few minutes early starting on the post time today, so kind of pay attention. That's moving forward. So. Keep track of those going. Uh, Kurt, anything else? Nothing else to add. Let's get right to it. Race number one, a $5,000 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota breads that are non-three lifers or non-winners of the year. We're going five and a half for a long stretch. Looks like we got the same. Yeah, we see it the same way. Uh, the two should be controlling speed. Last time, it didn't, I didn't mind the horse, but I knew that there was going to be some pressure. I don't think the horse is going to get that much pressure. Maybe a little, but no, nothing like it did last time. Uh, has a nice workout coming in. Uh, I think it's it's going to be a short price. It's going to go gate to wire. Uh, or That's how I see the horse going. Probably don't expect a short price. I think four to five is what you can expect. And we'll go to the five as the second selection. Uh, wasn't wasn't going to beat the winner in that race, but uh, should get this nice stocking trip. And, and if the two happens to get some uh, pressure from one of the other ones to try to go out, Maybe get the upset, but I just think kind of running for, for second uh, and just keep improving as the season goes and sitting on a win. And then the one is a, a good example. What we talked about in the intro is didn't show a whole lot, but I think the horse clearly needed one. Gets, gets that workout coming in, and it's, I think just battling for second. I think it's going to be the two and then one or five. So let's go two, five, one. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you. I think the two and four have the only speed. But the two horse is way faster than the four. They did run on the same day. There was about three to four lengths difference in the fractional times. And Bite the Bullet Bro did knock it out with the eventual winner, Not Afraid. I'm expecting him to get loose today. So he's tops. Guaranteed delivery of the five, just like Stretch. I think this horse will make a rally in here. That was the first start off, the layoff, and ran really well, losing to Prairie Magic in the photo. With Jersey Shadow going after the two, the four, uh, I think it sets up for a closer to round out the exactor, and that's who I think it is. And number one, Bear Me a Moment, was an open non-three lifer, now goes into the restricted, and this is going to be a much easier spot for Bear Me a Moment. Showed a little bit of late run. I think needed that race, got to work since. That's why I'm giving you also two, five, and one. Now we're going to carry on to race number two, a maiden race. For Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota, bred three-year-olds and up. They're only going to go five furlong stretch. What do you got in here? Yeah, I'm going to go to the dropper, the the six horse. A uh, couple things here. You look back at how what the talent of the race was. You had uh, Frank and Jake were in there. Uh, both came back to win. Frank won the, the allowance. Jake won a maiden special weight. Uh, Frank won by a bunch. Uh, Jake only He only lost to Jake by a couple lengths. And so give that similar effort. I think the horse is going to be right there. I think you might get a decent price because a horse is fifth feet and 11. So uh, if, if you're just looking at it as compared to some of the other ones, especially the, the uh, two and seven where they finish closer. So that is my top uh, pick. Anything around two to one for me uh, would be the right price. And then I'm going to go to the, the two, the invader from uh, Century Mile. It's one of those evenly type horses. I'm not a big fan of kind of taking a, a win bet on this horse. Might be a place or show. Ex expect the horse is going to run evenly if the six doesn't get the well the distance shouldn't be a factor but gets tired or, or just doesn't have what we expect to have that horse certainly could be there i think the horse is a must use in the try and the exactor for sure numbers numbers are certainly right there and then uh, you can see kurt looking for a price i look for a price on the one horse has two starts um or, or two starts lifetime so there's still room had one start only for set, for the 75. Didn't show a lot, but the key to this one is it actually passes some horses. And so, yes, it's only five furlongs, but if you look at the rest of the field, most of them don't pass horses. This is one of those types that 
I don't think it's going to threaten the top two, but could pick it up for third. And again, that's how these, you can make some money betting these favorites and just use those exa- uh, longer shots underneath. 6-2-1. Yeah, stretch. I think this is a bit of a wide open race. I like the dropper also. Same angle. Coming out of a tough race against Private Frank, Kentucky Jake came back to win. So kind of a key race. And with this drop, this will be much easier than that field was. So pretty well, I'm pushing it to the top because of that. I also like number four, Dot and Dash. How could I like this horse? Well, two-year-old campaign last year, one start, end of the year. But so far this year, three consecutive five furlong works. Very nice gate work, 102 and four, and then a really flashy 101 and four right after that, followed up by the half mile just to get a little bit of speed back in it. I looked at the uh, breeding on this horse. Mom liked to go short, the dad, a little bit of long and short mixed in there. But Dot and Dash, if you're looking for a horse to improve, which we see a lot of them do from two to three, this is bombs away. So I put it in second. And I took the two, Wizard of Menlo Park. Hasn't seen the breed ranks so far in the career. Gets to come to Assiniboia Downs, running these breed races. Perfect spot. The horse runs back to a couple of those races behind. Big chance to win. But I'm giving you six, four, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number three, an allowance optional $10,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Kicking off jackpot. Pick five wagering stretch. Who do you like? Yeah, competitive field. Uh, the two horses impressed me, uh, uh, both efforts. First start, the horse was bet down, and I, was, I thought the horse was, was bet down too much. And looked, So did I, because yeah. it was my pick. Yeah, well, I guess they <laughs> jumped. They <laughs> but didn't. we didn't expect no, it to be we didn't expect you were, money. Correct. You thought you were almost taking a bit of a price horse. Yes. And, and, uh, but the public was right, and the horse ran a huge race and just pressed. And then last time, the horse probably impressed me even more was, was – uh, Basically, out in the perimeter highway, post-12, uh, it's tough to win from out there. Ran a nice ro- wide race and, and lost to a horse uh, the first time start or first timer over the track. Ran good figures. That horse got the lead and just kind of kept going. This horse clearly shows doesn't need the lead. Should get a kind of a nice trip. Very game. That, that last race was just still trying to get to the leader. And, and uh, either one of those two races, I think this horse is, is right there again. The top selection. Between the one and the three, I ended up going with the one as my second choice. Um, first out was was fine, ran evenly, clearly needed that one. I think you're going to get some improvement. Um, if, if the horse runs back to the last two it's from 2022, watch out. This horse would be right there. Just a matter of, of the right trip. Sometimes you can get trapped on the rail or the dreaded post one on six furlongs. And the three, if this horse had a start, it might have even been my top selection. Solid figures from 2022. Uh, like I said, the works, the, uh, if it had a start, would be the top pick. Works say ready to go. Certainly wouldn't be surprised if the horse won. Um, just such a tough field, might need one. So two, one, three. Yeah, I'm with you, Stretch. Hard West, good win first time out. Parking lot trip second time. Today, compact field, not a lot of speed. Should get a dream trip. This is the horse to beat by a mile. I do like number three, McKeg. Everything Carl Anderson is set, setting to the racetrack has been running lights out. Yes, he's only hit the winner's circle once, but all those seconds were hard-fought seconds. And McKegs, look at that second race that it ran last year on July the 20th. That was lights out, losing to Golden Eyed. So if he comes with that type of race, he's got a shot to be an upsetter, and I'm with you on in the deep. Draws inside, tactical speed. Should be a stalker in here, and definitely he'll move forward after that first start. So I'm with you, but I'm two, three, and one. Now we're on to race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Again, an allowance optional $10,000 claimer for three-year-olds and up. Stretch, seven on top. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I thought this horse, horse toyed with the field last time out. I did like him last time. My only concern was maybe the six furlongs. That wasn't a concern because he basically ran six and a half furlongs in this, that race. <laughs> he, was, he was so wide, but he, he just looked so good. As watching the race, it's one of those, how much more can I get on this horse or it's too bad I didn't bet enough. He did not look like he was going to lose. Um, I think he gets, he gets better going longer, and if he repeats that trip, 
and doesn't run that extra distance from way out there I th- and gets a nice similar move, should be right there. Morning line, 5-1. to one. I think you're getting some really good value that people may ignore because he is moving moving up in class for sure. And then uh, let's go to the 2 as the second selection. Got out of the gate this time. It was an interesting look at the fraction. So always kind of look uh, when you're looking at the fraction, you think, oh, this horse is a speed horse. Not really. First fraction was was all of 26 and 2. And then had a nice mid. You, then they really picked it up. And that's when the running started. And then kind of tired. Uh, let's say he needed a, a bit of one after that uh, previous kind of mishap at the, at the gate. And so I think it's going to be a stalker today. Get that right trip. Uh, I'm certainly using it in, in the pick four and pick five sequence. And then let's go to the three as uh, Happy Camper. I, I, oh, you've got him too, Kurt. Look at that. Um, nice. How can you not? I know. <laughs> yes, you thought it was. You a tell him why. <laughs> Had the nice first race. Um, has the back class. Small clothes. I think this horse also can win it. That's how competitive this is. Um, there's more that can win it, but uh, right now, let's go seven, two, three. Yeah, stretch. I ended up going in a number six gallon oak. I see speed coming out of Steel Home if it wants to, and then Mister Walsh and X Checker. So I think the pace is going to be rather hot. We still haven't seen horses really go wire to wire in the seven furlong, and this is a mile race. So I'm kind of leery about that, just even though the horse might get loose in here. So Gallon Oak ran a huge race last time out, sat at the back of the field, and came a running, only to run second best to Explosive, who was much the best in there and the overwhelming favorite. A similar trip from Gallon Oak in here. With some pace up front, I think this one is going to be a top selection. And number seven, X Checker, I've seen the same thing as Stretch. Easy win. Yeah, it's doing a double jump, missing the 75, going up to the first level allowance, but definitely deserves it off of that. This horse has a ton of route form and one sprinting, so I expect it to move ahead. And I like number three, Happy Camper. You lose to Magic Tiger, who wins the second level allowance in the next start. An explosive, who's the three to five shot that takes care of the first level in the next try. I think Happy Camper hit the toughest first level allowance so far of the meet. So got to respect him in there. I'm six, seven, and three. On to race number five, a five thousand dollar claimer for Phillies Mayors three and up non three lifers tackling the five and a half furlong stretch. What about this one? Yeah, just quickly going back as your real good comment of knowing the allowance. Some are really tough allowance fields. And just understanding who are in there. So once some of them move on, it might not be as tough. So And especially uh, the droppers coming out of those type of races. Big Nick was a big key race for us so far. Yeah, it, exactly. A stake horse might have conditions and drop right in. Okay, on to race five. Uh, we see it uh, relatively similar. I understand why Kurt took his selection. Um, I'm going to go to the four as, as my top selection. I just have to go with her. I think she's going to just have such a perfect trip behind a potential pace battle between the three and the five. This will be the, the last time I take her if she doesn't win, just because the race absolutely sets up. If three or five get, out, uh, get loose, then it's going to be tough. And sometimes the five uh, has a tendency to, uh, a few starts last year, didn't get out of the gate. But uh, I think she get, if there's that battle up front, just sit, sits back, waits, pounces, and, and potentially wins. Price not, might not be great, but uh, that's still my top selection. Uh, the five, after looking at the fractions, and, and uh, Kurt called it even after we did a recap and commented on how fast this horse ran last time. I thought the horse just went too fast, ran out of gas. I like the sneaky cutback. It goes from six furlongs to five and a half. That favors the sprinters a little bit. And so if the horse can run back the race the first start of the year, that was such a good race. I was a little disappointed last time, but looking back, went too fast, couldn't get the distance in. And then the last one, just looking for a price. I think the horse can pick up the pieces. That's a seven. I don't think the horse can win the race, but if three and five battle, then you need you certainly need a closer somewhere. Um, take a look at the notes. It says past tired, tired rivals. I think that's the thing you're going to get again. Past tired rivals is just depending on what placing, four, five, seven. Yeah, I ended up going to number three, Mabella. Yeah, just beat up on a Manitoba bread field. But the way she did it, she looked like she did early on last year where she was at the allowance non-two lifetime level, 
ran absolutely massive first time out, only lost by a head, almost got that win. And that's open company. And Maybella, just the way she started, it was an easy run throughout. Gavian Chow gets along with this horse very well. He's rode it three times, has a win, a second and a third, draws inside, has gone against Arneson Dancer a couple of times, and one of them hit the front end and absolutely demolished her. So if Maybella, if Javian Chow early on sees that the speed is doing well, I think he's going to send to the front end, has the most speed, and he's going to try and steal it. Big respect for number four, Tapture Way. Here's your solid place bet. Ran a winning race last time out. Unfortunately, Cordillera absolutely loves our racetrack. Came from Alberta and mowed him down late when it looked like Tapture Way was going to get the win. This horse has run two big races in a row. Expect another big race. And if the three and five battle it, like Stretch said, then it absolutely sets up for a short price Tapature Way. And to round up my top three, I went to number seven, Ruby and the Stars. Might get overlooked with the 10,000 on three drop, but has ran two decent races against some very tough company. If you're looking for a horse to sit back and the speed is all up front and they go battling, this might be the big upsetter in your pick four and pick five. I'm three, four, and seven. On to race number six. Okay, stretch, $7,500 claimer. What a race this should be. Going six furlong for the boys. Who do you like here? Okay, easily the toughest uh, race on the card for me. I think five or six horses in out of the eight can win it. So that's the case. Let's find a price. Let's go with the eight as my top selection. Uh, was very impressive last time. And and because of that does fit in here, was just a, I don't think the horse can go to, will go to the lead, but the horse was just much the best and kind of got pulled by the jockey and then basically got the lead and kind of took over. I think if you look back at the Will Roger races, the horse was more of a stalker, and I think if the horse gets the right trip, uh, certainly has a shot. Eight to one's morning line might even get a little bit more than that. There's some good ones in here. But like I said, it's such a wide open race. I, I decided to take the horse that's on form right now and even might have some upside to even improve a little bit. But the figure certainly puts it right there. Well, five is my second uh, selection, and Kurt and I talked about it, and we kind of have the same rule as we don't really like to take a horse off a two year layoff. And so, Horse ran better than expected, actually. Extremely game race. Wow. Yes, for sure. Look back, crushed it, crushed when it was a two year old, and then was good enough that they actually sent the horse to Santa Anita. So obviously, there were some high hopes, obviously, a few issues with the, the layoff. So if they figured it out or the horse is getting back into health, watch out, runs back to the, some of those races or one of those type of horses that kind of belongs close to Santa Anita, could be right there. So you better not leave that one out. And the four is my third selection. It's one more start at the, and the waiver uh, spot. So it's a perfect spot for this horse. This horse has been running at higher races last time. So runs back to the races in 2022. Watch out. That horse can win. I'm going to go, uh, Kurt, eight, five, four, seven, two, three. Perfect. I was going to say we had five <laughs> out of the eight horses. I went to number two, Marquee Well. Don't think the horse liked the off track. But the one thing this brings to the race is a late running style. The one has speed, the four, the five, the seven, the eight. They all have speed. And if they have the same idea to go out and ensure that good pace, the six furlongs is the key. They battle, sets up for a closer. This is the only real closer I see that's legitimate. This horse loves the racetrack. Won nine out of 25 starts here. Fits well at the 7,500 or allowance 10,000 level. So I'm looking for a closer, plain and simple. That's why I put it on top. Number five, Diamond Digger. I thought when it pressed the front end, it would just fall back and uh, the wheels would come off, but that didn't happen. This horse fought all the way to the wire to a horse that was loose, fresh one, went wire to wire. Lucky break, took the drop, didn't get it done on the drop, but ran absolutely huge that day. I think Diamond Digger goes forward off that race. That's why I put it in second. And number seven, Little Toe. Another impressive win last time out. Did beat Lucky Break, who beat Diamond Digger, but that was only for the $5,500 price. This little jump up today to the $7,500, I don't mind that off a horse who ran really well its first time out. This horse can also progress. So I'm two, five, and seven. On to race number seven, a maiden allowance race. For Phillies and Mayors, three olds and up, they're going to tackle that six furlongs. There's going to be a massive favorite in here. 
Yes, absolutely. It's just a matter of how much pressure will the, will the, he she get. So last time, it, as we know that there's going to be some pressure, the horse lost the 20 cents on the dollar. And so wh why would I take this horse again? Well, main reason is the horse ran to her level. The figures were good enough. Is better figures than the rest of this field. He did beat the rest of the field by seven lengths. So the horse that she lost to just actually stepped up and, and ran a big race. So And it was a Phoenix winter race horse. Correct. Absolutely. And so that's what I look at. Did the horse lose the race or did some horse just step up and run a better race? And that's what I went with. Uh, like I said, probably not going to get much of a price. I'm going to go to the four as my uh, second play, second uh, or same kind of thing. Did run uh, at a short price. She, I expect she's going to improve. Has a work coming in. Maybe a small upset in here. And then the last one, I've talked about this horse uh, the last time. And again, uh, the first thing I mentioned on the two on the show was the horse has got to get out of the gate. Didn't get out of the gate again, but did make a bit of a move. Figures are not there. But if there's, it's a battle, maybe the horse gets out a little bit better. Could pick up the pieces at a big price. So use it in the high five or, or super. 942. Yeah, I'm with you, Stretch, on Sparkling Silver. Sting was taken out of her. She seemed like she was going to win it, and then Comrie Rule ended up showing some good late run, went on by. But there isn't a lot of speed near. Free carry comb has a little bit. But with the lack of early speed, Sparkling Silver, I think, can go to the front or sit off it if Jockey Jorge Carreno wants to. But definitely the horse to beat. Take a look at number eight, Island High, one of the two first-time starters. Seven siblings, three, three of them non-starters, a couple of full siblings, three wins, 57K, four wins, 70K. But who are the newer ones? Hidden Grace, a full sister, 18 wins, 400K. She won her first nine races. Also a full sister, Melisandra, nine wins, 180K. She only won her first eight races. Comes in with a flashy work in 36 and 1, and definitely from a running family. And the 10, Mila Maria, the dad going commando, multiple leading sire here. The mom, three wins, 86K, has a whole bunch of siblings, eight of them. Five of them are half siblings, three time winner, a 13 time winner, six, five, and a maiden. And the full siblings, a one, only one time, a non two lifer. Uh, another one, three wins, 30K. But another one, why so blue? Seven wins, 120K. And four wins to start off the career. So maybe a couple of those firsters will have a little bit of early run. I am taking the 10 for second and the four double-barreled light for third. Good luck with all your selections this evening. I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's car to racing. And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's seven race card racing. Turning to programs race number one, the Marie and Walter Jakubek's 69th anniversary memorial. There are no changes. Now turning to programs race number two, the Sigurdsson Financial Benefits Purse. Just some overweights. And they're on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs, race number three, kicking off jackpot, pick five, wagering the best darn Father's Day gift ever. The carryover, there's only overweights. The carryover in this evening's jackpot, pick five, just under $155,000. Now turning your programs, race number four, 
kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, just the lone overweight, again, on your TV monitors. Now turning your programs to race number five, our VIP fan of the night purse. Again, just a few overweights. Now turning your programs to race number six, again, some overweights. Turning your programs to race number seven, one more time, no scratches, just a few overweights. Well, an absolute gorgeous evening for racing here in Winnipeg. Look uh, at that stretch. <laughs> I, I, I'm growing a stretch plant. You are, and I'm the sun. It's, it is swell. Well, hey, yeah, you, know. you, you got two spots. Is I that do. because you hit the pick four and pick five? I guess. I, oh, thanks, Adam. I still had more winners than you. You did have more winners. I just bet them terribly. Under sunny skies, the temperature, 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, a light wind out of the southeast at 27 kilometers an hour or 17 miles an hour. The track is listed as fast. Fast racetrack for this evening, seven race car to racing. We're going to kick it off right here in race number one that goes to post in 17 minutes. Never been to NHC, this is what it is, right yeah. here. This is awesome. There are gonna be prices coming. This room is gonna be nuts tomorrow. These players are unbelievable. This is your chance to be in the spotlight. When all eight tracks are in play, there's gonna be bombs dropping left and right. There's gonna be screaming and yelling. Hawthorne is probably the best value out there for cash tournament play. If you're serious about contests and you want to experience the NHC, you have to find a way to get to Hawthorne as many times as you can. You absolutely have to. The reason I think the Hawthorne contests are the best value in contests, there's no entry fee. Hawthorne is giving away seats. You have to play in those events because, you know, we all know what the cost of an online NHC seat is. I got some free entry, come out to Hawthorne, so I made my first trip and had a great time. If you're playing contests, Hawthorne is a great spot to be. You know, there's no take out of the contest. So it's a great, great place for horse players to either qualify here or play in some live money contests. And welcome to Cinnaboy Downs. Be sure to enter your name for a chance to be our VIP Fan of the Night. Ballots are available in the lobby. If your name is picked, you get the VIP treatment, including a $25 wagering voucher, an ASD t-shirt, a trip up to the press box to come watch me call a race. You get to go down to the paddock, and then you get a chance to watch a horse race from the winner's circle, plus a framed photo with the winning horse. Now on to racing. If you're new to racing, stop by and see Shannon and Brad at the Van Education Center located on the main level. They can answer all your questions on how to bet. And be sure to download the new app called Dark Horse Bets. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit and a free Dark Horse t-shirt. Scan the QR code on the front of your program cover or on any of the posters around the building to download the app now. Have a great night of racing.
And welcome down to the paddock for race number one. We're going to kick off the week racing with a $5,000 claimer from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota breads that are non-three lifers or non-winners of the year. They're going to go five and a half furlong stretch. Even money on Bike the Bullet Bro and uh, deservedly so. Uh, absolutely. That's the morning line. I, I think it might drop a little bit. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Last time got in a big duel with uh, Not Afraid and, and battled and then got uh, a little bit tired. And that was the first start. Now comes for the second start. Should be that much uh, tighter. Gets a nice little workout in there. It uh, didn't really need, but 
That's only going to make him that much well, tougher. You say he did, didn't That's need fair. it, but Tom Gardaby said yes, and I don't know. I'm going to take his word over yours. You are Just saying that. You are correct. Um, you're absolutely <laughs> right. He knows way more than that. It's not even a, in the same uh, yes. So, so anyway, moving on from that, where the four, four doesn't quite have the amount of speed is not afraid does. So bite the bullet. Uh, is getting an extra half furlong, but uh, I think the horse will be on the lead and see how far uh, he goes. Yeah, and the one bear me a moment. Uh, this horse has been running very well here at the Downs. 14 starts, or 14 times in the money out of 24 starts and uh, four wins. Horse was a winner twice last year. Won the Open on three in the first start after arriving from Lethbridge at almost 10 to one. And then two races later, won the non-two lifer. Yeah, that's correct. Won the non-three and then went back and won the non-two, getting up and again was about 10 to one on the board in the lone start this year, was trailing every step of the way, did make up some ground late, only got beat by five and three quarters, impressive sense, was an allowance dropper from last year, who was wavered in, and just the buster ran a great race, North Fork came back and ran a very game second, so bear me a moment, was out of a real tough race, and I think this horse can improve off that, but it'll need a little bit more speed to set up for its late, late closing style. That's fair, and, and the other speed is the four, but let's go to the five. Is This horse will be try, running the same way as the one. They're going to be sitting just, uh, he'll just be sitting just off and, and try to make a, a bit of a late run. If there is a battle, the horse certainly can be there. There's some really nice races last year uh, that won, actually won three in a row, and so uh, he might be the upset. Yeah, and he should improve off that first start. Take a look at number four, Jersey Shadow. Ended off the year in good fashion. Went wire to wire, breaking the maiden against the restricteds for 5000 Then, for the first start of the year, battled every step of the way and held on for a nose victory in the non-two-lifetime condition. But Jersey Shadow has yet to test the kind of speed that is in this race with Bite the Bullet Bro. So we're going to see if Jersey Shadow will be able to chase and stay or chase and show some late run. If it can do that, it might be a good exact or two and four if you like the two to go wire to wire. For sure. And the the other one is uh, Double Time. Uh, Had the first start, kind of ran evenly, and then just tired, remember, not afraid, one by seven. This horse does win some races, but not great at the distance. I'll be waiting for him to go to the, the seven furlong race and pay 25 to one. Yeah, 25 or even 55, 50 to five to one. 55 to one that uh, the horse did get last year. Does show speed on occasion going short, but expect a better effort today. All right, let's go to our wagers. Here in race number one stretch, you start it off. Okay, I'm just going to start with a $5 pick three wheel. I'm going to key the two here. Then take the two and the six, and one and two in the last. That's a total of 20. You just wanted to play a $1 wheel. That's uh, two, uh, be $4. Quick, before you mention your bet, there was a horse in there with no no saddle cloth. What, was, what uh, was that? That horse was schooling. So it's just starting to get used to the paddock and the other horses round, so it's one of the younger horses or one of the first-time starters. Very good. All right, my bet, a $20 exactor, two and five. Give me the money now, Stretch. Good luck with all your wagers here in race one, and we'll see you back for race two.
horse are on the track for race number one. The Marie and Walter Jacobic 69th Anniversary Memorial. They're going to go five and a half furlongs for $10,000. Number one is Bear Me a Moment, owned by Carol, Bla Carol Brown, trained by Al Brown with Neville Stevenson. Number two is Bite the Bullet Bro, owned by Karen B. Arnson, trained by Tom Gardeby Jr. with Ronald Alley. Number three is Double Time, owned and trained by Steve Thompson with Siobhan Bell. Number four is Jersey Shadow, owned by Marvin and Deb Buffalo, trained by Marvin Buffalo with Sven Valroop. Running out the field is number five, Guaranteed Delivery, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Carl Anderson with Jorge Carreño. The Marie and Walter Jacobic 69th Anniversary Memorial. Here in race number one, they go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys kicking off uh, the, the week today, going five and a half furlongs. Public's got it down to the two and the five. Two's going to be going to the lead. I think he can keep it going. There might be a little bit pressure, but not like last time. If speed's holding, he goes gate to wire. If the two backs up, then the five can come. So it depends if you want a speed or a closer. I went to the speed. Two, five, and one. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you. The two battled it out with the eventual winner, Not Afraid, last time out. The four does have speed in here, but not Not Afraid or Bite the Bullet Bro kind of speed. So I think the two gets open and gets clear lengths. And when the horse does that, usually goes wire to wire. I do like the five for second. Ran big last time out. I expect a bigger effort today in a stocking roll and rounding it out with number one, Bear Me a Moment drops into this restricted race out of an open five non three expect it to show some late run on two five and one good luck here in race one
time. Bear me a moment. The first one to step up and in. Fight the bullet, bro. He's probably going to head in last. Double time is now in. Next up, Jersey Shadow. Just two left to load. Guaranteed delivery on the outside. And just waiting on the four to five favorite. Let's bite the bullet, bro. The field is set. They're at the post. Little jostling in the starting gate, and they're off. From the inside, bite the bullet, bro. Away alertly with Jersey Shadow. In between horses, guaranteed delivery on the outside, three wide, and a length and a half back. It's bear me a moment. And double time racing as a pair. A blanket over this field, two lengths from front to back, and bite the bullet, bro. Nursed on the front end through an opening quarter of 23 seconds. Now opens up by three quarters of a length. Jersey Shadow asking for more between horses. Guaranteed delivery three wide and all out behind them. Bear me a moment and double time. They hit the head of the lane and it's bite the bullet, bro. Spinning out of the turn with the lead by three. The half 46 seconds and bite the bullet, bro. Digging in from here. The battle is on for a second. Fight the bullet, bro. Long gone. Gonna win by seven. Guaranteed delivery, second best. Very close for a third between Barry a moment and double time. Stewart's supposed to number two, bite the bullet, bro. As a race winner, second goes to number five, guaranteed delivery. A photograph has been called to determine the show position. They went the opening quarter 23 seconds, the half 46 seconds. Five furlongs, 58 and two. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 105 and two. Results of the photo show number one, bear me a moment. Finishing third, fourth, went to number three, double time.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner of the Marie and Walter Jacobix 69th Anniversary Memorial. The winner number two, Bite the Bullet Bro. Bite the Bullet Bro is a chestnut gelding, seven years old by Gio Ponte. Out of the mare floating sky by Malibu Moon. Owned by Karen B. Arnson, trained by Tom Gardaby Jr., and ridden to victory by Ronald Alley. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 105 and two. Number two, Bite the Bullet Bro was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by K5 Stables. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. The Sigurdsson Financial Benefits Purse. There are no changes. Kicking off another pick three here in race number two. Well, the Cineboy Downs has introduced a new Chase the Ace Weekly Draw. The Progressive Jackpot is guaranteed at $5,000 if you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets start at $5 and are available online at asdowns-cta.com or in person at Guest Services or at the VLT Cashier's Cage located on the second level. The draw will be made tomorrow so get your tickets now. Proceeds support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, and the Manitoba Lung Association. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace Ticket Program.
and welcome back to Allen Paddock for race number two. We have a $7,500 maiden claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan and North Dakota, North and South Dakota bred. Of course, that are maiden going that five furlongs. Quick look back at race number one. Bite the bullet bro bent in half for half the race and won so easy. Yeah, and that's where you have, kind of have to watch the race and listen to your the speed of the, the fraction, as you called it, 23 and, and change. Uh, you would have thought, oh, that looks like a duel. It wasn't a duel. It was just a really good ride by Ronald. Ronald Alley, that was an excellent ride. He didn't use anything on the backside. No, he knew he knew he had enough speed to control it, and then that op- made the open move on the turn, and that was it. Yeah, and I got my short money home stretch. Uh, you're still going to have to wait to fill your pockets. On to race number two. <laughs> what do you like, stretch? All right. Oh, uh, yes. Like that? You that like was, how I put that, that was in there? good. Yes, you've got cash in your pocket. Yeah. I'm yeah. Moving on. Here we go. Let's go to the six. We both uh, landed on the six. Julie's already found the six. The uh, horse has the blinkers, which is good. Rest for success. A couple things here. The horse is dropping from maiden special weight. If you're unsure what that means, it means the horse can, cannot be claimed and potentially is racing against some stake place horses. And I think Private Frank is going to be in the stakes coming up. And then uh, Kentucky Jake was, you liked the other day and ended up winning. That horse lost by 11 um, and, and basic, or nine. Kentucky Jake. Sugar Daddy Jack was two two lengths behind. Correct. Let's just say it that way. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it's uh, early in the week. I just got to get the voice going. Anyway, that horse won for Maiden Special Weight as well. And so this horse, just a couple lengths back. Then then as a nice workout coming in, that looks good. A similar race. That's all I think this horse needs is a very similar race. That puts him into the winner's circle for me. Yeah, no doubt about it. Those dropping classes, we've seen it year in and year out. That is good enough to win. I did put this horse on top, but it isn't four to five in my eyes. I, I would need at least two to one on this horse to be playable, at least to me. Another horse I like in here, number four, Dot and Dash, is taking some early money right now at seven to one. Dot and Dash, wow, how can I like this horse? Didn't run very well. That was a two-year-old campaign, but look at the workout pattern. Three, five furlongs in a row. May 24th, a good gate work, 102 and four. Then they went even faster, 101 and four. Finished it off with a nice 49 and three half mile. Gets Lasix. There's a lot of upside to this horse, who probably at post time will go off at about 25 to one, I'm thinking. So I'm taking a shot on this one at a bit of a price for second. Yeah, there, that's a good example where you're just crossing out that last race because that line is irrelevant. Yeah, it's non-existent. It, that was at the end of the year. They probably rushed it. Correct. Uh, you almost consider it's a first-time starter. You're actually going to get a better price because it, many people are going to look at that price. I, I went to the two as my second uh, selection, six to one, a little uh, good odds there. Yeah, for sure. it definitely is. Uh, this horse is coming from Century Mile. Uh, basically is an evenly type run horse. And uh, that might be enough in here. They are only going five. This horse cuts back from uh, six to five. Was it the bottoms there? It, uh, if, if the six and seven kind of falter, this one comes in. I think that's the value play if the odds were what it was right now at six to one. And this one goes into the restricted races. It wasn't open. And it was running against older horses. There's only one older horse in this race. And that's the seven. I'm a star. Ran huge last time out. Only to lose by a narrow neck to Mighty Frisky, a first-time starter who rallied from the back of the field. I'm thinking this is going to be a little tougher because there's a little extra speed with Wizard of Menlo Park. All-Terrain Jane did show speed against Amastar last time out. But now with the three of them having speed, if Amastar does not clear, it's going to have a hard time winning this one. Agree. That, that last race was a, an impressive race. Uh, it kind of surprised me a little. My long shot in here is I went to the one going 30 to one. Um, I think the horse will come down a little bit. Uh, again, not a very good first race. Second race, maybe it looks like not much better. But the angle here is this horse has passed some horses um, at least. And I think that could be enough in here to pick up the pieces. Maybe for for third or fourth, this is a good way. If you like the six and maybe the even the seven. Use this horse for third or fourth, and you can get a real nice trifecta. So I'm cert- I'm certainly searching for a long shot, but just trying to get one uh, third or fourth. 
Yeah, another one to look at, number three, All Terrain Jane. This is the lone girl against the boys. She tackled the boys in her last one and duked it out with the seven. I'm a star for a quarter mile and was right there at the half before tiring. I expect her to show speed once again, but she ended up well beaten in the end. That's the thing I don't like. I'm going to wait for her maybe to go back against the girls, which seems to be a little bit of a softer spot but I'm not totally ruling her out in here. No, one start, and, and, and let's go to the five. This horse is at 22 to one, which is now the longest shot. This horse was actually 3.35 um, to the dollar on uh, bet. So obviously this horse had some upside. Now you're suddenly getting 22 to one. You got to be careful. You know, this horse is probably, they saw something in the morning and, and word kind of got out. Uh, 22 to one is, is huge value for a horse that was, you know, three to one first out. Yeah, it didn't show much, but we see what happens after one race of experience. All right, let's head to our wagers here in race number two. Stretch, what do you got? Okay, I'm going with a, a bit of a Kurt Ooh, bet. A five dollars. Yeah, a bit of a Kurt bet here. Uh, so try like we, uh, two six with two six with one four and seven. That is thirty for a five dollar. If you just want to spend the dollar. It would be six bucks. Two six two six one four seven. And myself, I'm going after the exactor. I like this long shot number four dot and dash. So I'm putting it on top with the two six seven for second, and then I'm flipping it around, putting two six seven on top, and putting a four in for second. I'm betting three dollar wheels, so that makes it eighteen actually. You want to bet a one dollar? Only six bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number two and we'll see you back for race three kick it off jackpot pick five wagering So on the track for race number two, the Sigurdsson Financial Benefits Purse. They're going to go five furlongs for $10,000. Number one is Keystone Cash. Owned by Sylvia Harabchak. Trained by Devin Gittins with Siobhan Bell. Number two is Wizard of Menlo Park. Owned by Norm Suderman and Colleen O'Hagan. Trained by Colleen O'Hagan with Praven Badri. Number three is All Terrain Jane. Owned by Shelley Brown and Anderson Livestock Stable and G. Jackson.
trained by Shelly Brown with Dwight Lewis. Number four is Dot and Dash, owned by Beverly Leonard, trained by Michael Rawl with Chavi and Chow. Number five is Shotgun One, owned by Cam Ziprick and Charles Fulliard, trained by Devin Gittens with Demario Bino. Number six is Sugar Daddy Jack, owned by Larry Falloon and Ann Champion, trained by Shelly Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Running out the field is number seven, Amma Star, owned by Christy Dejarlis, trained by Ryan Dejarlis with Jorge Carreño. The Sigurdsson Financial Benefits Purse, here in race number two, they go to post in two minutes. And as this is the second race, we have our HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse. That is number six, Sugar Daddy Jack. Number six, Sugar Daddy Jack, the HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse here in race number two. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, Maiden's going only five furlongs today. Maiden's horses that have not won a race. For lifetime, we've got six boys, one girl. Let's go to the six horse, which is the lukewarm favorite at nine to five. Horse is dropping in class, running against some much better competition. Now drops to a little bit easier. Has a workout coming in since the last start. Second start over. So many good things to like about him. I think he's good. he could be stalking near the pace and kind of take over. Others to consider would be the two. That might show speed. That's your invader from Century Mile. Long shot at 24 to 1 that might get third is the one. Six, two, and one. Yeah, stretch. I also like the six a bit in here. Sugar Daddy Jack with that drop in class. The only bad thing is the horse does have a little bit of speed. If it gets hooked up with the seven and the two and the three, it might get log jamming and set up for my four horse, dot and dash. A lot of good works coming in. That was one two-year-old race at the end of the year. I'm really expecting this one to improve. And the invader from Alberta, Wizard of Menlo Park, knocking on the door for a win. This is an easier spot than was in last time out. Six, four, and two. Good luck here in race number two.
time. Keystone Cash, the first one in. Next up, the Wizard of Menlo Park. All terrain Jane, the lone filly in the field. She walks in. Cotton Dash is next. Shotgun One's turn. Just two left to load. The favorite Sugar Daddy Jack. Wizard of Menlo Park, fractious in the gate. And just waiting on I'm a star to the outside. Bill is set, they're at the post. I'm a star almost in. Now he's in. I'm a star fractious in the starting gate. And they're off. Breaking a little slow was Wizard Mental Park. And Keystone Cash, shotgun one quickly, goes out to command the early advantage by three quarters of a length. On the inside, all-terrain Jane, Dot and Dash, close up early in third, Sugar Daddy Jack, the favorite, back in fourth. Then it's Summer Star, a gap of six more to Keystone Cash and Wizard of Menlo Park, the early trailer. 23 seconds, the opening quarter. Now Dot and Dash goes up to battle with Shotgun One as they hit the head of the lane, trying to come up the rail. All terrain, Jane. Dot and Dash now takes over the lead. Back to second, Shotgun One. Sugar Daddy Jack trying to make a late rally, but this is all Dot and Dash. Gonna win by four. Shotgun One is second. Third's gonna go. To Keystone Cash. The short supposed to number four, Dot and Dash, as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Shotgun One. Third to number one, Keystone Cash. And fourth to number six, Sugar Daddy Jack. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. The half, 46 and four. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and one fifth.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of race number two, the Sigerson Financial Benefits Purse. The winner number four, Dot and Dash. Dot and Dash is a chestnut gelding, three years old, by Edison, out of the mare Clean Air, by Wildcat Air. Owned by Beverly Leonard, trained by Michael Rowe, and ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Time for the five furlongs, one minute and one fifth. Race two is official in the upcoming third race. Kicking off jackpot, pick five, wagering the best darn Father's Day gift ever. There are no changes. We would carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick five, but there's just overweights, only overweights, in races four, five, six, and seven. Jackpot pick five wagering the pool just under $155,000. They go to post in 15 minutes. Are you new to the Cinnaboy Boy Downs? And check out the 140 VLTs located on the second level. They're open all day, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Also, this is the first leg of the 20 cent wager called the jackpot pick five coming up in race three. If your ticket is the only correct one, picking the winners of races three to seven, you're gonna win the whole jackpot, which will be close to $200,000. And when there is more than one winner, a consolation is paid out and the jackpot keeps growing.
welcome back down the paddock for race number three for this allowance optional $10,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number two. Bombs away. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, interesting. Good pick on your four. You, you gave all the reasons we talked about just throw out the last race. The workout's coming in. Watching the race, didn't look like he was uh, <laughs> was going to lose from the spot. No. Um, Shotgun one ran absolutely huge and a good rally by Keystone Cash. Yeah, they, they all kind of, I wouldn't say they made sense, but they made sense that they could improve. We talked about that a little bit on, on ASD Live on the show. Uh, as we mentioned, the five went off at three to one and went off at, I believe, 30 to one at post time. I know the horse didn't win, but still ran such a big effort, so... Ran closer to what they saw in the morning. There's some long shots you can figure, or you can't figure out. Those ones made sense to me. Definitely. Let's head on to race number three. Jackpot pick five. Probably over $200,000 if you're the lone ticket tonight. Stretch, I thought this horse would be more bet than two to one. Yeah, uh, for sure. It, it's early. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I agree, this horse has always been bet. Uh, it looks like there's a... a a big racing group, which is great to see. I saw them win their their first race and uh, looked very excited right around they the winner's circle. They definitely did. So that was awesome to see. Um, it is my top selection. Uh, I, I think you're going to get a little bit less, but this horse has run two really, really good efforts. First one, pressed outside, took over. The next one was so is post-12. We don't have many 12-horse fields. This horse was wide. Sir Deputy got the lone lead and kept going, ran a really big effort. It's evident this horse uh, is a game horse, doesn't need the lead whatsoever. It's going to get a much better uh, trip, not being a three to one, three wide. Antonio's up. We've talked a lot about how good he's been riding. I think he's going to give him a good trip. Yeah, no doubt about it. And there isn't a pile of speed. The four and five have a little bit. But if Hard West gets out loose, could be long gone. I also like number three, McKegg. While this horse last year, first start of the year, was a little lackluster, but the comeback race was excellent against Goldeneye, had the lead, and then Goldeneye took it away late. Carl Anderson, again, having a fabulous meet. Only one win, but has been knocking on the door with everything else. Mike Keg, definitely good enough for these. Good running style, and being bet right now at 5-1. to one. Yeah, it Horse has the class, absolutely. Let's go to the one is is ends up to be my second selection in the deep. One of those first starts of the year. Uh ran relatively evenly. Did lose to Hard West. Hard West at that point um had a start. I think you're gonna get the same trip. Look back at the races uh in September last year. Those are winning races, and those races would put this horse right there. Expecting kind of a similar similar trip. Yeah, definitely. Uh that horse was in the fray, but they the top two just kept going. Also, look at number four, Crown Royal. Started off the year in good fashion, went to the front end, banged it out, and then ended up drawing off to win by a length of three quarters. Now hit the first level allowance last time out, was chasing after Sir Deputy, and uh, ended up costing the horse any placing in the top three. Crown Royal needs to get the lead all alone. And if that happens, this horse will be tough. But this horse can come up, come from off the pace, which I think is a better running style for this horse. So a big race, not out of the question. Great odds, seven to one. Sure, and I'm I'm going to go to a horse that uh, I took. Uh, I liked last time as a long shot. That's the seven horse. If we can find the seven, Julie. There, the horse had a bit of trouble. Just watch the replay, and there was some trouble there. Then has a workout. If you look back at how well this horse ran last time, again, similar to uh, figures is in the deep. And so I think if the horse kind of runs back to what he what he can, um, maintenance work coming in certainly can be right there. 14 to 1 is, is a pretty high price being that long shot. I think this horse does not to be deserve to be the longest shot in the field. And this horse will love the extra furlong. Number 5, Browning Island. This horse was a multiple winner last year. And uh, did it in good fashion, wire to wire in the one, and the other was a stalking effort to draw off by three. A very sharp work coming in, 36 flat in the Woodbine horses. They've done better this year than the last 15 years combined. 
unless it was one of the big state courses that came in. But uh, Browning Island, some of those races, definitely good enough to win this one. For sure. For, sh- for sure. So and the other one here comes another one. Uh, the six horse uh, was bet down in a, in a good race at Magic Tiger. Went around two turns. Didn't, maybe didn't belong in, in those those uh, that Magic Tiger race. But uh, if you look back at the class at the six, six and a half, has one at the distance. Needed the one start for sure. Cuts back. Probably right, spotted correctly in here. Yeah, and it drops a notch from the second level allowance down to this first level allowance. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number three. Stretch on a roll with the pick fives, cashing two out of the last three last week. And one of them, was that, 1300 and some change? It, it was. Or are you going to yeah. tell me exactly yeah. again? 1328. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank let's you for go ask- our wagers. Yes, thank you for asking. No okay, problem. Okay, 20 cent pick five. I'll. I'll Put it right up front. I'm not. It's not a strong ticket. I have no strong opinions on any of the horses in in this sequence. Uh, so that's why it's spread. I do like to kind of have a key. Couldn't find one. Let's take one and two in this first leg. Then two, three, six, and seven in the fourth. Three, four, five in the fifth. Two, four, five, seven, eight, and then the four, nine. $48. You could cheapen it in a few spots, but I'll just stick with that one. That is bizarre how our tickets yes. are almost identically played. Not the same numbers as I have two, three. Then we have the same two, three, six, seven. Then I have three, four, seven. Then two, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm keying the nine in the last. That's only $24. But if I added a horse, it would have been the same as you Correct. stretch 48. But you got all the money. Good luck with all your wagers here in race three, and we'll see you back for race four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick for wagering. are on the track for race number three the best darn father's day gift ever purse they're gonna go six furlongs for sixteen thousand five hundred dollars number one is in the deep owned by jerry gowdy and rick wise trained by rick wise with chatty and chow number two is hard west owned by cheap laughs racing trained by shelly brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number three is McKeg, owned by Nearco Limited, trained by Carl Anderson with Stanley Shady Jr. Number four is Crowned Royal, owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lise Pruitt with Sven Balrope. Number five is Browning Island, Owned by Devin Gittens and Ron Wiley. Trained by Devin Gittens with Demario Bino. The six is Unbroken Star. Owned by Jared Brown, Shamrock Racing Stable, and Regal Group. Trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Rounding out the field is number seven, Maybe Sometime. Owned by Windancer Stable. Trained by Wendy Anderson with 
Ronaldo Cumberbatch. The best darn Father's Day gift ever purse. Here in race number three, kick it off jackpot, pick five, wagering. They go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, here we go. The boys going six furlongs in a competitive allowance optional claimer. Some top horses. Let's go to the two as the top selection run two very good races a first and a second similar effort put this horse right there should be stalking in about third or fourth early and make that late run and potentially to the winner's circle i'll go to the one as my second selection had the first start should get the trip along the rail and uh, that horse could be there i'm going to give you a long shot uh, the seven horse at 15 to one had a troubled trip might pick up the pieces and help you make a, a nice pay out in the exactor. So let's go 217. All right, Stretch. I also like number two, Hard West. Here's a horse that can go to the front or stock, but it won't be far away. Had the outside post 12 last time out. Now draws inside and will secure that rail. So I think the one to beat. I also like number three, McKeg. This horse has run some big races in the last couple of years. Carl Anderson has had them already, and in the deep, the one rounds up my top three, two, three, and one. Good luck here in race three.
in the deep. The first one secured in the starting eight. The seven to five favorite, Hard West, now steps up. McKeg will be the next one to go in. Brown Royal walks up in the middle. Browning Island ready to go in. Just two left to load. Unbroken Star. Maybe sometime from the far outside will be the last to go in. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. Hopping at the start was Browning Island. From the middle, McKeg shows some early speed with Crown Royal. Painted on the outside. Three wide, unbroken star showing speed. Now going through on the rail. Hard west. Four across the track. Two behind them in the deep is watching the action with maybe some time in Browning Island. After the poor beginning is a trailer. 22 and four, the opening quarter. And Crown Royal and Unbroken Star. These two look at each other in the eye. Hard West looks to have a mitt full. The favorite in third in the deep, starting to gobble up ground. Four wide. And McKeg, the rail opens up. They hit the head of the lane, a short lead for Crown Royal. In between horses, Unbroken Star on the rail. McKeg has slipped through. A late rally from in the deep on the outside. Unbroken Star digging in and is going to win it by two. Second best is going to be McKeg and third in the deep. The stewards are posted number six, Unbroken Star. As your race winner, a photograph has been called to determine the place and show positions. They went the opening quarter 22 and 4, the half 45 and 2, 5 furlongs, 58 and 1. Time for the six furlongs, 1, 11 and 2. Results of the photo show number three, McKeg. Finishing second. Third goes to number one in the deep. And fourth to number four, Crown Royal. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race three, 
the best darn Father's Day gift ever. Winner number six, Unbroken Star. Unbroken Star is a chestnut gelding, eight years old, by Broken Val, out of the mare Bashada, by King Mambo. Owned by Jared Brown, Shamrock Racing Stable, and Regal Group. Trained by Jared Brown, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the six furlongs, one eleven and two. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race, kicking off fifty thousand dollar guaranteed pick four wagering. There are no changes, and there's also no changes in race four, five, six, or seven. $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering starts right here in race number four. And ladies and gentlemen, we've drawn our VIP fan of the night. Congratulations goes out to Danielle Desjardins. That's Danielle Desjardins. Congratulations. You're our VIP fan of the night. Please report to guest services on the main floor. South End. Well, besides the excitement of racing and chasing the ace, big events will be staged at the Downs this summer, including the Canada Day Fireworks and Festival, featuring food trucks, artisans, vendors, kids' activities, live music, and of course, a spectacular fireworks display by Canfire Pyrotechnics. Tickets are $10. Five and under are free. Go to asdowns.com for more information.
welcome back down paddock for race number four kicking off fifty thousand dollar guaranteed pick four wagering again with an allowance optional ten thousand dollar claimer for three-year-olds and up but this time they're gonna go one mile let's take a quick look back at race number three well i got fooled here and broken star showed that speed and just kept going yeah uh we talked about it uh i'm with you i didn't select Select him, but if you go back, there's the, he's the cutback was key. There was a nice race in, in March, so I know we didn't take him, but it does show why he's there. That big class drop, yeah, was, from second level to first level allowance. You see those droppers run those races, but uh, this was definitely a great race today. Okay, on to race number four stretch. Who do you like? Okay, so uh. I went to the seven thinking I was going to get a price at uh, a yeah, not a great one right now. Five to one was the morning line, and and uh, I, 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 yeah, and so you bet too much on it. <laughs> not yet. Oh, but, okay. Uh, the horse looks so good. Everybody must have saw how good that race was. Uh, circled the field as if they were kind of standing still. I joked on ASD Live that the horse ran about six and a half furlongs. I thought this after that last race. I was just so impressed because this horse is better going two turns. It shows at Tampa some solid figures there. Uh, moves up in class, but if you go back, there are some some uh, higher price races. There was a fairgrounds that ran all right. Uh, it did drop to the bottom, but it was winning with good figures when it was at the bottom, and that non the non two was right there of the year. So similar effort, uh, certainly right there. I don't. I would not take this horse at four to five at all. It's, yeah. Yeah, definitely not in a bit of a wide open race. I see a lot of pace in here. So I went to the six horse, Gallon Oak, ran a big race first time out, only to lose by three and three quarters to Explosive, who was a massive three to five favorite of the race. And Gallon Oak made a good middle move. That's what I really like about this horse. Has a good turn of foot. And that was the race that, like you said, sped up as they went. So if there is a pace battle between two, four, and seven, or any combination out of two out of the three of them, I think it sets it up for a closer. And I love eleven to one. Yes, you you are getting the value there. That makes sense of of uh, getting that price. He's worth the risk at that. I went to the two. I'm not so sure on on if this horse is going to go to the lead or not. Uh, just because of the early fractions, this horse certainly can go to the lead, but he's also come off. Off the pace, sitting just off and ran some nice races. So I like that that middle move. That, I like watching horses make a speedy middle move, and then they usually kind of tire because they took a took a nice run, and, and then they flattened, but they showed me something. So I think 3-1 to one is about the right price. Could end up on the lead, but uh, can also stock. So I think you've got to use this horse for sure. Yeah, another horse I like, number three, Happy Camper. Lost to Magic Tiger, who came back to win the second level allowance. And then Explosive came back to win the first level allowance. And both of those horses were bet off the board. This horse made a really nice rally from the back of the field to run third beat in four and three quarters. Does need a little pace on the front end to run at, as this horse has made some closes in the past, but made them and then ended up tiring. But that was a very good, encouraging first race. There's no Magic Tiger or Explosive in here. And five to one, that's very reasonable. Yep, for sure. And so let's go to the one horse that had a bit of a troubled trip last time, was bet at seven to one last time, going off at 12 to one. If you take a look back, obviously it says check. They, they uh, look back at the races at uh, Turf Paradise, They're always right there. Has four wins of 16 lifetime starts, uh, eight, eight of 16, 50% of the money. I always like looking for those type of horses. It continues to have the blinkers, has fronts for the first time, something to kind of make note of that. And uh, if the right trip could be there at, at a price. Yeah, and take a look at number five, Uncle Mo's cat comes right back. After a lackluster effort, uh, maybe just didn't like the track, the sloppiness. But this isn't a horse that goes five furlongs. This mile will suit Uncle Mo's cat a lot better. Has run the mile four times as a win and three seconds and twice here at the downs both of them seconds has yet to win at a cinnaboy downs in nine tries but at least the horse does get its distance today 
Correct. That first one was a run around the track just to, to test it out. Let's go to Mr. Walsh. The four is the, is the last one, 12 to one. Bet down a little bit. Morning line, 25 to one. Couple works coming in. It's going to be the first start at the track coming from Fawner. This is one of those potential speed horses that could get out. He might, uh, Neville likes to send the horses. That That's how this horse, I think, is going to win if it can get the lead and, and slow it down. Not sure it can, but I think that is going to be his running style. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number four, Stretch. Start us off. Okay, so I'm taking... You like what I did I do. I like your tickets. I saw it earlier. I I do like that ticket. You can uh, get it twice. And and on Tuesday and Wednesday, the reason I bet two tickets is I had a key in the first leg, Tuesday and Wednesday. I missed, and I picked all three legs to end it off both days and didn't get it. No, for sure. That's why I really like the, the ticket. You could get it twice if both your keys hit. So let's go with my only one ticket today. I could only find a key. And, and we're going to go with uh, taking a bunch in here. One, two, three, six, seven with four with two, three, four, five, seven, eight. And finishing off with the four and nine, taking a shot in the fifth. Hey, it's a $60 ticket. Lots of price horses in those uh, first and third legs. I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't hit a couple all buttons in there with your big bank roll from last Wednesday. But I'm going to start off with two, three, six, and seven with three, four with two, five, seven. Key the nine, twenty-four dollars. Then doing another one, two, three, six, seven. Keying the three, Maybella, with the two and five, rounding out with eight, nine, and ten. Again, a twenty-four dollar ticket. Good luck with all your wagers here in race four, and we'll see you back for race five. on the track for race number four they're gonna go one mile for sixteen thousand five hundred dollars number one is last renegade owned by winnie anderson and keith wright trained by winnie anderson with ronaldo cumberbatch 
Number two is Steel Home. Owned by Ira Donald and King Couture. Trained by Jared Brown with Jorge Carreño. Number three is Happy Camper. Owned by Ryan DeJarlis, Blair Kidd, and Robert McKinnon. Trained by Ryan DeJarlis with Chevy and Chow. Number four is Mr. Walsh. Owned and trained by Jerry Garno with Neville Stevenson. Number five is Uncle Moe's Cat. Owned by Murray Duncan and the estate of Gerald B. Stewart. Trained by Murray Duncan with Ronald Alley. Number six is Gallant Oak. Owned by Bonnie McCrory and Gary Danielson. Trained by Gary Danielson with Praven Badry. Rounding out our field is number seven, X Checker. Owned by James Kaplan. Trained by Steve Kaplan Jr. with Antonio Whitehall. Kicking off pick four wagering guaranteed. At $50,000, they go to post. In three minutes. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys kicking off the, the pick four, going a mile. Reminder, they go past the finish line twice so don't cheer on that first time by it's a wide open race i thought i had a longer shot in here that's the seven horse ran a big race last time was on the outside made the move took over one big moves up in class i think can handle that need a better price though others to consider the two horse should get a stocking trip and that's a good place to be going the two turns and another long shot that'll be cl closing a little bit will be the three should sit back if there's a pace battle that's the horse to get so I'll give you a seven, two, and three. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I see a little bit of a pace battle in here. Four and seven. They both have six furlong speed. Throw in the two. That showed it last time out, so I went to the six-gallon oak. I think this horse, with a huge close last time, to the massive favorite explosive. This horse will like that. Getting once over the racetrack with that good look closing kick. If the speed backs up, it'll be coming. X Checker, you got it on top, ran absolutely huge, deservedly so. And the three happy camper beaten by two horses that came back to win easy. So I'm gonna give you a six, seven, and three. Good luck here in race four.
time. As Renegade and Steel Home, both in the starting gate. Happy Camper, Mr. Walsh also in. Uncle Moe's Cat. Now secured. Two left to load. Gallon Oak. Steel home a little fractious in the starting gate. And X Checker, the favorite, is now in. They're at the post. And they're off. From the inside, Steel home shows good early speed. Mr. Walsh. Is going to put on the pressure early. Settle back in. Third on the rail. Last renegade in between horses. Happy camper. Three wide. Uncle Moe's cat. S X checker. Second to last. And Gallon Oak can see them all. Pretty quick opening quarter. 23 and 4. Steel home and Mr. Walsh. These two have opened up three lengths. On last, Renegade in third, coming up the rail. X Checker has found a good spot there. In between horses, Happy Camper. Another length and a half back to Uncle Moe's Cat. And Gallon Oak is last, but only six off of it. 48 and one, a quick half mile. And Steel Home, looking strong, opens up by two lengths. On the far outside, that's Happy Camper making a bold move. X Checker with a bunch of horse will be looking for room. Last Renegade also rallying from the outside. They're coming to the head of the lane, and it's Happy Camper putting a nose in front. Steel Home trying to battle back. X Checker has that room on the outside and is trying to get Happy Camper. Happy Camper with the lead. X Checker. With the late run in the middle of the track, X Checker, Happy Camper, those two, photo finish, too close to call, Gallon Oak finishing third. Stewards have requested a photograph to determine the winning horse. They went the opening quarter 23 and 4, the half 48 and 1, six furlongs 113 and 3. Time for the mile 142 and 1. Results of the photo show number 7, X Checker, getting the win. Second goes to number 3, Happy Camper. Third to number 6, Gallon Oak. And fourth to number 1, Last Renegade.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race four, box number seven, Exchequer. Exchequer is a gray or own gelding, seven years old by exchange rate. Out of the mare, fools in love, why not for love? Owned by James Kaplan, trained by Steve Kaplan Jr., and ridden to victory by Antonio Whitehall. Time for the mile, 142 and 1. Race four is official in the upcoming fifth race. Our VIP fan of the night race, there are no changes. Kicking off the late pick three in race number five. And just a reminder that if you're new to racing, to download the new Dark Horse Bets app. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit to their account the Dark Horse Bets app was designed for people new to horse racing, making wagering simple with smart picks predictions available for all races. Get your free $30 now by signing up for Dark Horse Bets. Just scan the QR code on the front of your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number four, we had a claim to report. Play for $10,000 was your race winner. Number seven, X Checker, claimed by B&J Stable trainer Shelly Brown. And welcome back down the paddock for race number five. We have a $5,000 claimer for Phillies Mares three and up that are non three lifers. They're going to go five and a half furlongs. Quick look back at race number four stretch. What a race and what a finish between Happy Camper and an Exchequer. It was a really good race. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. That's what happens when you get the mile. There was a pace battle early, and then I obviously was watching the seven. And my top selection and, and Antonio. And if I'm the owner, I'm giving Antonio extra because him finding the rail out of the seven he, hole. Yeah, for sure. And then he just waited and made a move and it's so much horse. Eh, maybe got bottled up. But then, then the three ran a nice race with uh, Chow. It was just noses at the wire. It was, it was solid. Solid race. Awesome race. That first level allowance going long. That'll be a fun one. Five horses within about two and a half lengths. Okay, on to race number five stretch. Looks like it's whittled down to a few that we, everyone likes. Yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, the public uh, choices. Uh, I, I went to the four because I think there's a potential pace battle between the three and the five. If one of them gets uh, loose, then it makes it tough for the four to win because he's going to have to sit just off the pace. Ran, the first race ran a nice race and kind of stalked, and then the next race kind of just got beat to, to your invader from... Uh, Entry mile and ran a nice race. We saw that uh, a speed horse gets loose, they can go gate to wire. In this case, I don't think either one does. And so it sets it up for me as a, a, a strong up a, a play, if not a super strong place play. Stretch, yeah. Stretches super strong place play. I gotcha. I did go to number three, Maybella. Artisan Dancer and Maybella have teamed up twice, they've met each other. First time out, Artisan Dancer got the better of Maybella. But the second time, Maybella was just way too good. Beat her easily by five and three quarters. And now, now that we're a little into the race card, Chavi and Chow is riding lights out. Had a win earlier. Just lost that photo on a good ride. I think he's going to put Maybella in a really good position and uh, is getting a lot of respect. And this horse definitely deserves it. Won that race real easy, but if he gets loose, gone. Agree with you, and that's such a good point about uh, Chow. That when a jockey gets confident, oh, we, we saw Kind of like Antonio. Kind of like Antonio. Yeah, so I went to Artesian Dance of the Five as, as my second selection. It uh, uh, ran such a nice race the second, first start out, oh, battled. A great race. Yeah, and then the next time they went to six furlongs and kind of got tired. Uh, I like this horse. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't take this horse to win because he has seven seconds here, Kurt. But anyway. Yeah, that's my <laughs> usual way of going. But, <laughs> but not, I, today. not today. You went somewhere else. Right price. This horse battles. I, I've played this horse over the years and, and uh, just doesn't always get it done. I kind of see the Shoot same thing. Shoot a lot of your money. He did. Uh, she and did. Mine. She, she did. So anyway, second. That's what I'm going with. Second best. All right. Another horse I like in here. Number seven, Ruby in the Stars. I expect this horse to get overlooked, but it's taken a big drop from 10 on three. First time was against the boys. Ichu Babu won that one. Came back and ran a really good second place finish for 7,500 wide open. And then that 10 on three race got beat by Ensley's Dream, who also came back to win her very next start. And I expect Chicago River also to win really quickly. So Ruby and the Stars has tested some really tough ones. If a closer is able to get there, watch out. I think this will be the one. I agree with you for sure. That's that's why you're running kind of the race shape and figuring it out. And and if, if there is the pace battle, even the four could move early. 
I'll talk about the one. The horse is on the rail. Chased a bit of the pace last time and then faded. It's going to be a big long shot, but might just be able to sit behind the pace battle, stay on the rail, maybe upset in the uh, second or maybe third or fourth in here. And the two Scarlet's Flower was a winner at first asking after coming from Gulfstream with a beautiful running style, then went over to Century Mile, ran a decent race, but the speed kept going. Horse came back to win. Traffic was in the comment. Didn't like the seven furlongs. Good work coming in. This might be a little play in there, throwing it in your tractor. For sure. And the last one, the six, is a bit of, it can be a bit of closer. Similar. This condition does have the upsets. This would be one of your upsets, but I'll, I'll use them again, third or fourth, and maybe a try or super. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number five. Stretch, what do you got? All right, we're going to go with a, a three bet try, different one. We got a two, they're two dollar wheels. All right. Four with seven with all. Interesting. Okay. Four with the wedge, with meaning okay. the all with the seven. In case somebody oh. gets away on me, just a two dollar one. It's three, five with four with seven. Yeah, that's not confusing at all. Well, you just have to look on the screen. You'll understand the speed. See, you've got the speed might get away. That's why I've got it in the closer second or third. Now, all right. Perfect sense to me. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> and myself, I'm going to make it easy. 30 to win on the three. Good luck with all your wagers here in race five. And we'll see you back for race six. on the track for race number five our vip fan of the night purse they're gonna go five and a half furlongs for ten thousand two hundred dollars number one is sea of life owned and trained by doug mustard with antonio whitehall number two is scarlet's flower owned by back on track stables trained by jennifer jordan with Siobhan Bell. Number three is Maybella, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault, with Chavi and Chow. Number four is Tapature Way, owned by Tom Boyko, trained by Carl Anderson, with Tim Tarasenko. Number five is Artisan Dancer, owned by Wind Dancer Stable and Daryl Peranica, trained by Wendy Anderson, with Rinaldo Cumberbatch. Number six is Saturday Service, owned by Henry Wood Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno, with Demario Bino. Running out the field is number seven, Ruby and the Stars, owned by Kurt Bellick, trained by Jennifer Jordan, with Nairo and Austin. Our VIP Fan of the Night purse, here in race five, they go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the 
girls going five and a half furlongs is always a bit of a tricky condition. I've chose a horse that's going to sit uh, just off the pace behind a potential fast pace battle. If you saw race four, that's the same thing I'm trying to think or looking for on the four horse in here. She's going to sit, make the big move. A couple to consider the five is going to be battling, but I think the speed can carry. You want a bit of a long shot. You won't see this horse up front early. Look at the back and make a late run. That's the seven, nine to one to pick up the pieces late but I'll give you four, five, and seven. Yeah, Stretch, I like number three, Maybella. She has good early speed, and she has beaten a five artisan dancer, who is the other speed by going wire to wire. I'm just thinking the way Chavi and Chow's riding today, he's riding hot as a pistol. So if this horse does make the front, I think it's long gone. I really like number four, Tapture Way, to get a piece of things, and Ruby and the Stars, I also like as a late closing, long shot on the board. Good luck, three, four, seven, here in race five. Sea of Life leads the Phillies and Mares into the starting gate. Next in, Scarlet's Flower. The favorite at 7 of 5, Maybella. Walks up and in. Temperature Way is next. Artisan Dancer, she's now in. Just two left to load. Saturday service. And just waiting on Ruby and the Stars. They're all set, they're at the post. And they're off. On the far outside, Saturday service. Showing all the early speed matched on the inside by Artisan Dancer, who now takes over. 
Saturday service back to second. Maybella moving up in third. Fourth on the rails. See a life capture way to the outside in fifth. A gap of four lengths back. Ruby in the stars. Scarlet's flower. The early trailer. A quick opening quarter. 22 and three. Artisan dancer with the lead. Maybella hot on her heels in second. Four lengths back on the inside. See a life in between horses. Saturday service and a lot of work to do for Tapture Way. They hit the head of the lane. Artisan Dancer, the lead shortening up by three quarters of a length. Maybella gonna try and catch her from here. A late rally by Saturday service on the far outside, but it's gonna be Artisan Dancer hanging on for the win. Saturday service second best. Third is gonna go to Maybella. The stewards are posted number five, Artisan Dancer. As your race winner, second goes to number six, Saturday Service. Third to number three, Maybella. And fourth to number four, Capture Way. They went the opening quarter 22 and three. The half 46 and one. Five furlongs, 59 and two. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 106 and three. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race number five, that's number five, Artisan Dancer. Artisan Dancer is a Bay Philly, four years old, by Painter, out of the mare, Sharky's Dancer, by Perfect Mandy. Owned by Wind Dancer Stable and Daryl Peranica, trained by Wendy Anderson, and ridden to victory by Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Time for the five and a half furlongs, 106 and three.
Race five is official in the upcoming sixth race. There are no changes. Super high five wagering here in race number six. And just a reminder to get your Chase the Ace tickets for our new weekly draw. The Progressive Jackpot guaranteed at $5,000 if you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets start at just $5 and are available online at asdowns-cga.com or in person at guest services or at the VLT cashier's cage on the second level. The weekly draw does take place tomorrow, so get your tickets now. Proceeds support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, and the Manitoba Lung Association. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace Ticket Program. And welcome back down the paddock for race number six. We have a $7,500 claimer for the boys three and up 
They're gonna go six furlongs. Quick look back at race number five. What a great ride by Ronaldo Cumberbatch, taking over the lead and hanging on for the win. Yeah, it was it was the right move. Go as fast and as far as you can, and kind of get rid of that duel. And and they did cut back, which which is a nice cut. Yeah, back the from... six to five and a half that made the difference. This was all out for five and a half. Yeah, correct. And and if it's if it's six, if it's five and three quarters, yeah, the, the six gets there. Six so, gets there easy. So he gets full credit on recognizing exactly how far the horse can go. And Saturday service, that might be a play for next time, uh, but won't get the long odds. Okay, on to race number six, Stretch. What do you like? All right. Uh, as you can see, the betting board, no, yeah, the two is the favorite. There's a favorite in every race, but... Uh, I'm going to go to the eight. Look at that. Julie knew exactly where it was going to go. Um, I've landed on this one. This one, I'm getting a price this time. Unlike the one I thought I was going to get on the other one and went off as the favorite. Uh, this horse is similar. Ran a nice big race. Yes, was in the non-three. Now going to the 75 open. That is a pretty big jump. I just like how this horse did that. Did it. I think the horse was just much best and got pulled to the lead. This time can sit just off. There's enough speed in here that I don't think this horse can get the lead. Uh, so the right trip, just on the outside. Uh, Ron Alley already has a win today. You betcha. Yeah. Race number one. Yeah, so you always like to do get that. So that's where uh, I'm going to start. Yeah, I think there's a lot of speed in here. So I did go to the two. Marquee well, five to two on the board. Throw out that last race. The horse never got engaged after hopping at the break. This horse is much better than that. Has won nine out of 25 starts here at the Downs. And in here, the one, four, five, seven, and eight, they all have early speed. Mark e. Well doesn't have that, but won't be too far away if there's a three, four horse duel. Jorge Carreno will be licking his chops. Absolutely, and if you recognize how good this horse is, um, at ASD, nine wins, uh, 13, 15 of 22 in the money going at uh, ASD. So, yeah, good pick. I went to the five as my other one. Uh, Diamond Digger was off for two years, came back and ran a really big race and just got tired late, which was expected. This horse, that is a two-year-old, was perfect four for four and then went tried it at Santa Anita, which is a little surprising or just tells you how what high hopes they had for the horse, and even went on the turf. Didn't work out, but just to ship the horse there to give it a, give it a shot. Got to consider uh, this horse uh, to improve for sure. You're getting 5-1, to one, which I think is an overlay right now. Oh, yeah, because it chased after fresh one and went wire to wire and did not give up, and that's what I liked out of Diamond Digger. Definitely should go forward. Another horse I like in here, number seven, Little Toe. Jumps up from 5,500 to 7,500, but we've seen X Checker win for 5,500 and win for first level allowance optional 10,000. So this isn't a huge jump for Little Toe. I like that the horse does have good fractions on a day that it wasn't as fast as June 5th and 6th. Those were the really fast days, and Little Toe put down some serious fractions. I think it's going to be involved in the early pace. And if it runs the same way, definitely a shot. Yes, I'm glad you make that point about the different days of, of the track and, and where it is. My third selection, and, and certainly can run, is, is the four. Seven to two right now. Last race, kind of chased and got tired. Looked like the horse needed one. You look back at last year, uh, had five wins, uh, eight of 11 in the money. At, at a slightly higher level, did drop for five for a win, but certainly belonged uh, right at this level. Can show speed, and if it wants, if Antonio decides wants to be the most speed, outside chance to just keep going. This is hor this horse has fooled me a few times on just how fast, grabs the lead, and that gets very brave in the stretch. Also like at number six, Roaming Union. I liked this horse a bit last time out. Didn't show anything in the race, but has a lot of back class. Has almost made a half a million dollars and uh, ran great races at Oaklawn. Those were route races. Does get an extra half a furlong here as they are going six furlongs. And I could see this horse trying to come from off it 
and Tom Gardafee Jr. having a fabulous start. You're looking for bombs away, 14 to 1. For sure. And I'm going to mention the longest shot on the board right now is, is Gold Special. This horse uh, comes right back, seven days right back, which uh, is a little surprising after not a great effort. But remember, it, it's an allowance, optional claimer. We just saw one win uh, a couple races back that looked similar form. From the second level of the first, this takes a drop also. Correct. And, and is a closer. So it's the right running style that fits if there is that, that duel. So. 14-1 to 1 now, right back. I wouldn't leave the horse off the ticket. And the one horse, Himmelstein, trying to show speed, going five and a half. But I don't think like the racetrack, beating double digits. This horse will get better as they go farther. I'm thinking the six furlong, plain and simple, too short. Too short. Just watch. If, if you're not going to play this horse, you'd make notes of it for getting this horse when they, when they go the two turns. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race six. Stretch. What do you have? Okay, so uh, I'm just going to do a three dollar exactor box. Mentioned on the show how hard this race is. Uh, three dollar exactor box, four, five, and eight. Total of eighteen. You want to do a one dollar? It's only uh, six bucks. And myself, I'm going tractor wheel. I'm taking two five two five with four six seven eight. Then I'm throwing in the wedge two five with four six seven eight with two five. That's going to cost you sixteen dollars. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six. We'll see you back for race seven. are on the track for race number six they're gonna go six furlongs for fourteen thousand eight hundred dollars number one is himmelstein owned by goose racing trained by shelly brown with ronaldo cumberbatch number two is marky well owned by jared brown and lucky eight stable trained by jared brown with Hargate Carreño. Number three is Gold Special, owned by Bill Meikle and Wind Dancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Number four is Dazzling Mischief, owned by Garth Grider and Violetta Adamchuk, trained by Jared Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is Diamond Digger, owned by A2 Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Malt with Chavi and Chow. Number six is Roaming Union, owned by Ray Croto Jr., trained by Tom Gardaby Jr., with Demario Bino. Number seven is Little Toe, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gornell, with Praven Badry. 
Rounding out the field is number eight, Carol Watt. Owned by Leland Cavanaugh, trained by Mike Taphorn with Ronald Daly. Super high five wagering here in race number six. They go to post in three minutes. Two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys going six furlongs in, in a, a very tough race to figure it out. You can see the betting board. I've landed on the eight as my top selection. You're getting seven to one. I think that's more than fair. That's what I was hoping for. I think the horse can stalk and, and make a nice move. It is has to face some tough competition. Who does he got to beat? That's the five. Diamond Digger, only one start after a two-year layoff. Same thing. Could get to sit close, try to make a run late. And the other one that might be the speed of the speed, and that's the four. A lot of back class. Could just try to steal it. So I'll give you eight, five, and four. Yeah, Stretch, I was looking for a closer in here. I settled on the two. Marky Well taking a lot of money at two to one. But the four has speed, the five, the seven, the eight. Even the one has some speed. If they go log jam up, I'm expecting Marky Well to come flying at him late. Throw out that last one in the slot. Diamond Digger, great debut. Last time out, only to be beaten by two and rounded out with the seven. Little Toe, jumping up in class, but ran big. Two, five, and seven for me here in race six.
Hemmelstein, the first one in. Next up, the current 5 to 2 favorite, Mark Well. Actually, I was gold special going in. Diamond Digger now in. Roaming Union loaded. Little Toe steps up and in. Carowat to the outside. Now two left to load. Mark E. Well, the five to two favorite. And just waiting on dazzling mischief. They're all set. They're at the post. Dazzling mischief, fractious. And they're off. From the middle of the track, Little Toe showing good early speed with Himmelstein. Pressuring from the inside in between horses, Diamond Digger. Makes it three across the track. Behind them, Terawatt, Dazzling Mischief, Gold Special. Back in fifth on the rail. Then it's going to be Roaming Union and Marky Well. The early trailer, 22 and 4. The opening quarter, a short lead for Little Toe. Diamond Digger on the inside, Terawatt. Making a big move, three wide, to engage Little Toe. These two, two lengths ahead of a rallying Roman Union. And Mark e. Well making up big strides, 45-4 and four for the half. Terawatt on the outside, Little Toe. Battling back, Roman Union. Making up ground in the middle of the track and Marky e. Well, Roman Union now blows on by, bombs away. Roman Union is gonna take it. Little Toe seemed to hang on for a second. Marky e. Well in third and fourth to Tarawat. The stewards are posted number six, Roaming Union. As your unofficial winner, a photograph has been called to determine the place and show position. They went the opening quarter 22 and 4, the half 45 and 4, 5 8, 58 and 2, time for the six furlongs, 1 11 and 3. Results of the photo show number seven, Little Toe. Finishing second. Third goes to number two, Mark e. Well. Fourth to number eight, Terawatt. And fifth to number three, Gold Special.
now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race six, that's number six, Roaming Union. Roaming Union is a big gelding, eight years old, by Union Rags, out of the mare Double Gelato, by Bernardini. Owned by Ray Cotto Jr., trained by Tom Gardipe Jr., and reading a victory by DeMario Bino. Time for the six furlongs, one eleven and three. Congratulations goes out to trainer Tom Gardaby Jr. who scores the double. Two wins for trainer Tom Gardaby Jr. Race six is official in the upcoming seventh race. There are no changes. Super high five wagering and there is a carryover of just under $2,500 here in race number seven. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine, $4.75, as well as 25% off all appetizers plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number seven. We're going to end off the Monday evening with an allowance race for Phillies Mares three and up that our maidens are going six furlongs. Taking a look back at race number six. Well, Stretch, I talked about all the class on this horse today. Definitely showed through, and there was that pace battle. It was, it, uh, but I don't know if it was the same two that we originally No, thought. it wasn't. <laughs> so uh, a couple good rides, and a couple went a little too fast, and a, a superb ride on the six. Take note, the, the six had a workout coming in, which is an angle we both like, because uh, not a great effort, but then decides, uh, they probably figured something out. You look back at that back class like you mentioned. So a uh, bit of an overlay. I, I know you liked him last time. and, and Yeah, uh, I picked him on top. Yeah, one. Not know, today at not, 25 to 1. Not today. All right, let's keep moving. If you're alive in the pick four, pick five, well done. There's, if you can finish it off, you've got some nice payouts coming. Neither of us uh, have that. There, nope. the, the good news is there's one race left, and there's a, there is tomorrow. So we can only and Wednesday and Wednesday we can only try to be better uh, uh, moving forward. All right, let's start with the hey, well a lukewarm favorite, and that's the nine. Um, we did both like this horse last time. Ran a nice race, did lose. I don't like that it was twenty cents on the dollar, but if you look back at just the figures, battled, got in a bit of a duel, and then tired late, beat the rest of the field by seven. That's the big angle for me is when there's separation from second to third. It uh, was just so much better than the rest of the field. So uh, there could be, the seven is probably going to press again, and you notice that that horse kind of uh, tired out. Now maybe uh, Reno can just be on the flank, take over, and, and kind of keep going. Uh, two to one is, a, uh, I think, more than... Uh, more than fair fa price more than right fair now. Price. I don't think you're going to get there, but if you, if you know you can get... Well, maybe five dollars. I think it for me it would be a win bet. Yeah, I think it's going to be even money, four to five at post time. Let's take a look at number eight, Island High, taking money at four to one, and it should. Seven siblings, three of them, nothing to worry about. Hate my ride, four wins. Jet again, three wins. But then we hit a full sister, Hidden Grace. She had eighteen wins, four hundred k. Won her first nine races, and another full sister, Melisandra, who won the older mare stake, the Cool Excellence. She started off her career eight straight wins, has won nine, 180 k. Nice work on June the fifth, 36 and one. But I would like to see something a little farther, as this race is six furlongs today. But if she's anything like her big sisters. Wow, this could be an interesting one. For sure, for sure. So let's let's go to the uh, four is the second choice on the board, as expected. Another beaten favorite, but does have the workout coming in. Uh, Chow is riding very well these days and uh, did run second. Wasn't going to beat the winner. Uh, certainly was uh, Manitoba bred, now racing open. Uh, we're not sure how good this field is. I think there's a lot of potential for horses to improve. but. A similar race, if can uh, improve a bit, could be right there. And Double Barrel Delight got beat by a real good one in Cussin' Cat. We haven't seen that horse run back yet, but I expect big things out of her. Another horse to look at, number 10, Mila Maria. This is uh, out of going commando, as is the four and the eight. This was a multiple leading sire here in Manitoba. The mom, three wins, 86K, eight siblings. Five half siblings, three wins, six wins, five wins, a maiden, 13 wins. And out of the full siblings, Why So Blue is the best, seven wins, $100,000. And Why So Blue did win its first four races. Key to Life, another full, three wins, 30K. And the other only had one win, 16K. So a pretty good family. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go to my long shot here. I'm going to go to the two horse. I've talked about this uh, last time. It was a bit of a replay horse. Uh, needs to sit closer. Does have a bit of a turn of foot late for, for this. Uh, the horse is improving with each start. Does have to improve a little bit more. But could pick up the pieces at a big price. We've, we've seen a couple closers get in the money. And so that's where I'm looking at it. I don't think the horse can win. But 
There is the high five, and uh, we do have a carryover with uh, yeah, just a, under twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, and so why not take advantage of it? There's that dead money. Go from there. Another long shot I like number six. Everything to gain. Didn't like this horse at all last time out, but showed a little more last time. Beaten by ten, seven and a half lengths behind number nine, Sparkling Silver. But I like that the horse got better now that it has two starts under the belt. I think the horse can move forward even more. And if it moves forward just a little bit, definitely can get the money at a big price. Absolutely. And so let's go to the the three horse. Had only one start. Bit of eh, mildly, not big trouble, but did get bet down. And we saw that what's happened with the one start race in the uh, third, second race. A bunch of first, uh, second time second. starter, and they ran yep. literally one, two. So same thing can happen. There was uh, obviously like this horse enough uh, at that those odds. Oh yeah, number five, I am Mila gets blinkers on today. Beaten double digits last time out, as a lot of horses were. I think this horse uh, can improve off that start, and I like that it can come off the pace. For sure. Now, the one that might have effect in this race, and that's the seven, had the first start at Woodbine, or came from Woodbine, ran out of gas kind of quickly, but I expect some improvement, gets used to the turf, was running on the poly uh, before, now on the dirt, so we'll see how far this horse can go. If, if they decide to try something with the nine, maybe the, the seven gets brave. And the one horse, Stevens Flair, this horse showed a little bit of speed last year, late, on, late in the year. I think this horse, if it wants to show speed, won't last too long. There's a lot in here. So I'm going to tab it for later. Let's go to our wagers here in race seven. Stretch, what do you got? Okay, just a small uh, track try. Or... You'd like to say I'm confident because I'm making it a $2 try wheel, but uh, I should make it a dollar. We'll leave it at that. Try to make some money to finish the day. Four and nine with two, four and nine with two, three, four, five, nine. The triangle. And myself, I'm going to two dollar tractor wheel, but I'm keying the nine with the four six eight ten with the four six eight ten a dollar twelve bucks. I'm doing a two dollar for twenty four. Good luck with all your wagers here in race seven. We'll see you back six forty five central for ASD live. on the track for race number seven. They go six furlongs for $20,000. Number one is Tiemann's Flair, owned and trained by Alan Brown with Tim Tarasenko. Number two is Ashes to Ashes, owned by Shelley Brown, Bet Holtman, Steve Holburn, Christina Bell, Black Sox Stable, and B&J Stable, trained by Shelley Brown with Renola Cumberbatch. Number three is Just a Pose, owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lise Pruitt with Sven Balru. Number four is Double Barrel Delight, owned by A2 and True North Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault 
with Chavi and Chow. Number six, or number five, is I Am Mila. Owned by Back on Track Stables and Larry Falloon. Trained by Jennifer Jordan with Siobhan Bell. Number six is Everything to Gain. Owned by Wind Dancer Stable. Trained by Wendy Anderson with Neville Stevenson. Number seven is Free Carry Comb. Owned by Stella Racing. Trained by Stephen Gaskin. With Demario Bino. Number eight is Island High. Owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lee Pruitt with Praven Badry. Number nine is Sparkling Silver. Owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Carl Anderson with Jorge Carreno. Rounding out the field is number 10, Mila Maria. Owned by High Road Stable, trained by Tiffany Husbands with Antonio Whitehall. Super high five wagering here in race seven. They go to post in three minutes. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. Girls finishing the night off going six furlongs. Lots of big payouts today. That could happen again today. I'm going to land on the nine as the top selection. Was the beaten favorite. Getting two to one, which is a more than fair value for this horse. Yes, has run second the last two times, but in very good figures. If, he, this, if she can sit just outside, may be able to press and take over. Others to look at would be the four. Ran a nice second last time. Gets a workout coming in. Should improve. The long shot coming from the back will be the two. That would complete it and help it make it pay. Nine, four, and two. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number nine, Sparkling Silver. Big race last time out. Yes, it did lose as a favorite, but beat everything else rather handily. I expect the horse to be forward in the race and get a good trip. The one to beat. I also like number 10, Mila Maria. This has some good family, including Why So Blue. Horse that made 100K, won four races. And also take a look at number four, Double Barrel Delight. Just ran second to him. What I think is going to be a monster. Good luck here in race seven.
Demons Flare and Ashes to Ashes. First one's in for the nightcap. Just a pose is in. Double Barrel Delight walks up and in. Double Barrel Delight a little fractious. I am Mila is in. Everything to gain next. Free carry comb walks up and in. Island High, one of the two firsters in the race. Island High going to get a little extra help from the gate crew. Two left to load. Even money favorite, Sparkling Silver. And now just waiting on Mila Maria, the other first time starter to the outside. The field is all set. They're at the post. And they're off. From the middle of the track, that's first carry come. Showing speed with sparkling silver. To the outside in second. In between horses, everything to gain with double barrel delight and just a pose. They're running as a trio. Right behind them, Island High is up close, Ashes to Ashes. And Timmons Flare is the early trailer. 23 seconds, the opening quarter. And it's free carry comb on the inside, Sparkling Silver. Now taking over, Island High. Moving up smartly in third. Back on the rail, Double Barrel Delight. In between horses, just a pose. Ashes to ashes to the outside. They hit the head of the lane. 46 and 4 to the half. And Sparkling Silver has a lead by 5. Ashes to ashes with a good stride. I am Mila trying to come up the rail with double barrel delight. But this is all Sparkling Silver getting the win. Double barrel delight, second best. Third's going to go to Ashes to ashes. Fourth to I am Mila. The Stewart's supposed to number nine, Sparkling Silver. As your race winner, second goes to number four, Double Barrel Delight. Third to number two, Ashes to Ashes. Fourth to number five, I am Mila. And fifth to number three, Just a Pose. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. The half, 46 and four. Five furlongs, a minute even. Time for the six furlongs, 114.
Now entering the winner's lane enclosure, the official winner. Here in race number seven, that's number nine, Sparkling Silver. Sparkling Silver is a Bay Philly, three years old, by signature red, out of the mirror, Essence of Silver, by Essence of Dubai. Owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Carl Anderson, and ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the six furlongs. 114. Congratulations goes out to jockey Jorge Carreño, who scores the double. Two wins for jockey Jorge Carreño. Now head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level. Beer, shots, and wine, 475 and 25% off all appetizers. Racing resumes tomorrow and Wednesday at 7.30. See you then. Now, let's head to the clubhouse for crazy hour.
in the MHC, this is what it is, right here. This is awesome. There are going to be prices coming. This room is going to be nuts tomorrow. These players are unbelievable. This is your chance to be in the spotlight. When all eight tracks are in play, there's going to be bombs dropping left and right. There's going to be screaming and yelling. Hawthorne is probably the best value out there for cash tournament play. If you're serious about contests and you want to experience the NHC, you have to find a way to get to Hawthorne as many times as you can. You absolutely have to. The reason I think the Hawthorne contests are the best value in contests, there's no entry fee. Hawthorne is giving away seats. You have to play in those events because you know we all know what the cost of an online NHC seat is. I got some free entry, come out to Hawthorne, so I made my first trip and had a great time. If you're playing contests, Hawthorne is a great spot to be. You know, there's no take out of the contest. So it's a great, great place for horse players to either qualify here or play in some live money contests.